Hello everyone, it's Josh J. Vintage Minis in Orlando, Florida. Uh, what we're looking at is a 8 of 70 manufacture date, CT70, so 71 model. Uh, it's brought to me, we're going to do some engine work. I am going to be installing the CHP out of Texas, their 88 kit, their stock style looking kit. Uh, check out the other video I did uh, down a, probably a a handful of videos back I did a comparison to the TV parts 88 kit with their head uh, versus uh, CHP's 88 kit uh, with their CHP's head so I just did kind of a general comparison between them two and uh, a little good info for you guys if you're curious of what what the differences are between the kits uh, so aside from installing the top end I'm gonna get his uh, chain guard polished and painted I'll do the clutch cover. We're going to do a clutch um, replacement on this bike. I'm going to go around and clean up some of his aluminum parts, uh, chrome. We'll polish that out. I'll put the uh, top plate for the handlebars into the polisher and get that a mirror finish, um, which I'll make a separate video because I've gotten some new polishing uh, pads and um, other items that uh, I'll introduce you guys to to help you get to that next level shine. Um, this bike had some bent handlebars, which I ended up bending back in place, but unfortunately my fault. I had my tool um, and didn't check clearances, and when I went to tweak the handlebar back, the tool put some pressure on the glass lens on the speedometer and cracked it, so I'm responsible for that. I'm rebuilding uh, the top part of his speedometer, and uh, so just let's, uh, let's get to it, and uh, let's hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, so first things first, uh, for me, I'm going to just make sure I get spark on this engine. Um, so I don't want to deal with that later. Uh, it's got an old battery, so I'm going to go with the sealed battery setup. Um, and as long as we, you know, the battery, um, <clears throat> you know, for this wiring, your battery isn't part of your getting spark uh, to the coil, to the spark plug. Actually, this only thing that really needs to be in place on these harnesses is if you didn't run a battery on it. <clears throat> It's not, again, battery's not necessary to run the engine. Is this black loop here? This is, if you look at the diagram, this is just a connecting loop that is built into this harness to prevent you from um, being able to get spark. But if you actually just piggy tail these two wires together, uh, you'll buy, you can bypass a battery and uh, get the engine to run. Uh, just FYI. Um, so let's let's get a new battery in there. And I'll test the spark just to get a baseline, make sure that uh, the actual electrical side is working on this engine. So I just threw an old spark plug in uh, in the boot without before pulling my other plug out, and you can touch it to the fins on the head and give it a kick over with your key turned on. Uh, and this bike, particular bike, I get spark, so I'm happy. All right, so I got the old battery out, and I put a sealed. Uh, battery in there and use the old harness. Uh, so, you know, I got verified that I had spark. So, in preparation for the uh, CHP top end kit, I'm gonna, you don't need an oil, uh, you don't need a high volume oil pump for their kit. That's their claim. Uh, so, we're not gonna change out the oil pump. Um, we're gonna do clutch. I'm gonna put some new OEM Honda clutches and oil's draining out. Uh, if you're draining oil, just pull your cap. It will flow faster. Just a little quick tip. Uh, so I'm going to end up doing the clutch cover here. And you're going to need to drop off, get your kickstand out of the way. Or probably can finagle. I don't know. You might not be able to, but I'm going to remove it because I want optimum um, area to work around here and clean my gaskets. Uh, you're going to you know, pull off your kickstarter. This will just drop out of the way. This foot brake, as long as you release it from uh, tension back here, you can just undo your nut and drop your foot brake lever. <clears throat> but uh, once I get to the head cylinder head area to do the top end, I'm going to pull off the um, engine guard here, this chrome piece. You actually can get to it when you're when you're uh, dropping your foot pegs. And I'm going to pull the front fender. I think I need to pull the front fender. I'll double check in that area. If I have to, I'll pull the front fender. And then another tip, if it's tight tolerances, is you can always deflate your tire too to get some more room to pull the heads uh, and jug off. 
also your drain bolt. Um, just make sure you don't lose your crush washer or washer that belongs in between the bolt and the case. This one doesn't even have it on there, so uh, it's not something you want to forget because you might have some leaks and you put some new oil in, and the next thing you know, you got to pull it, the bolt back out and drain all that, lose all that oil. While you're working on the clutch side or beginning to start on the engine, make sure to get your clutch discs pre soaked in the same oil that's appropriate for the engine. Uh, best if you get them soaked overnight, but if uh, you start, I uh, say, you know, a couple hours if you can get them in there, uh, that's good enough. Uh, again, so here's what I use I use Shell Rotella T4 15W4, uh, non synthetic engine oil. Uh, let the debate start uh, for the Honda GN4 fanboys, uh, but uh, that's all I care about right there. Let me see if I get that focus. JZO MA rated. So any of the uh, let the arguments start. And uh, CT70 manual. Here's some oil information um, and some temperature. But you don't need straight weight. They're okay with multi-weight too. FYI. Since you'll be taking your engine uh, guard off for this procedure, uh, it's a good time just to get in there. A lot of times you'll have a bunch of oil and grime, so just use that as a time to get in there and clean this, this part up um, as good as you can. So it looks a lot more presentable when you put it back on. So, trying to get your kicks start lever off. A um, couple ways to do it. You can put a screwdriver sometimes in here and uh, expand uh, these two parts to separate them, loosen them up on the spline. Another trick is uh, like a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench. Typically you can get it in there, just give it a gentle tap and it will go around, go around that um, kickstart shaft. And you can just kind of give it a few gentle pushes, and that will release, you know, a stubborn um, kickstart shaft and uh, kickstart uh, lever. So just get your springs removed. Uh, I like this tool. I, I remember where I get every tool in history here. I still remember when I bought this tool. This was for my uh, first car. It was a, a 1990 or 89 Fox body Mustang. Uh, 306 had Edelbrock aluminum heads that were ported, uh, Tremec transmission, fully built rear end, uh, sweet car for high school. But this is for the drum. This is a tool for a drum brake uh, spring. But I like to just use this tool on my builds because it actually gets in really easy and uh, lets you get up and underneath these springs that are kind of challenging at times. Oh, just pulled it off easily. So if you Want to get one of these? These work good. So you get the springs out. You're going to want to drop this foot brake lever pedal. And I, instead of taking this part apart, I just recommend obviously loosening your tightening nut here on the back uh, brake arm. And then you can release, the, release that pedal and drop it down. So like I said, uh, release that brake lever, foot pedal, uh, lever will drop. Uh, get your fender dropped. I'm going to take the exhaust off. You got a 12 millimeter bolt here right at the engine case area and then an acorn nut here that you need to get off and then two 10 millimeter nuts down here and then you can pull out your uh, your exhaust out of the way here. I'm just going to jump on this side of the engine, crankcase side or stator side. Um, since I'm putting a bigger bore kit on it, you should consider it too, as you can kind of alter your sprockets to get a little more speed since you're going to be putting some more torque and power out. Uh, so just get your chain guard off, two 10 millimeter uh, bolts, and then you got a screw down here. And just real quick, these uh, screws on all the cases, all these screws are JIS screws, Japanese Industrial Standard heads. They're different than Phillips. So get yourself a JIS bit, uh, that way it fits into that screw. Uh, again, it's, it's a little different than what a Phillips head uh, bit design is, and these will insert properly and have 
um, you know, less chances of even stripping out your screw. So you want to get a JIS bit. This is a number three JIS bit. That's what fits on all these case screws. All right, so everything's taken off. Uh, just pre-disassembly so I can work on the top end too. Uh, but we're just going to focus on getting the clutch serviced and prepared for the big bore kit. I like to work on my bike on the side, so I'm going to lay it on uh, so the uh, flywheel is towards the ground. Stole my kid's bean bag a while back, so it's dedicated garage duty now. And that's what I use to lean the bike on so that the oil, uh, resi residual oil that's in the crankcase still stays in there and it's not tripping all over, mucking up my job. So, as you can see, I get a pretty good layover on this bike. It's soft material, nothing scratched up, it works for me. Uh, now's the time to get your kickstand off and foot pegs out of the way so you can take that case off, clutch case. Uh, just another quick observation for you guys so you don't get confused if you're, you know, I throw all my stuff in a baggie so I don't lose all the bolts when I'm taking apart. Uh, but the these are our foot peg bolts that are holding the foot peg to the uh, bottom of the engine case. The long bolts are going to go in the most forward two uh, boss holes for you. And they're longer, uh, so you can have some more thread to put your engine shield on to, because it's going to be a little thicker. So the long bolts are the two long bolts go in the very front of the engine, and the smaller ones are in the rear. All right, for sake uh, for sake of not duplicating some of the information I'm making video-wise, uh, I do have a video I've already done on the three-speed semi-auto clutch uh, friction material replacement. So I'll put that in the summary under this video that you can watch if you want to watch the whole job as far as getting the discs replaced. Uh, I'm not going to film that for this bike. If I see something interesting along my way taking this apart, I'll give you some video of it. But uh, otherwise, go to the other link to get the clutch replacement and service video.